welcome, you guys. It's so excited to be doing this. I'm Belinda Schmidt, and um, it's fun to see everyone. I um, <laughs> I know there'll be some people joining us that I haven't met because uh, we've invited some friends and families, which is great. The more the merrier. Um, and before I um, introduce you to our resident expert chef, Marsha Smart of Smart in the Kitchen, I just wanted to say a uh, thing about, you know, why, right? The whole point was uh, isolation in this COVID times and just uh, pent up, pent up need for socialization, right? Plus, I don't know, it's kind of fun to, how often do you get a cook in your kitchen, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, that's the whole point of doing it. And, um, and Marsha is, I don't know if you guys looked at all the links I sent, uh, sent you, but I think of Marsha as Instagram famous. <laughs> She's got <laughs> some great videos and uh, she does a great job on her Instagram account. So I feel honored to, to have her uh, facilitate us through this. Well, thank you so much. So I'll tell you guys, um, since COVID started, we have been doing a ton of these classes on Zoom, which at first I was kind of like nervous about it and sad that we weren't gathering in person because for 20 years I've taught cooking classes in person, but I've come to sort of love it because like you said, everyone can cook in their kitchen So I'm excited to do this and I'll tell you guys the order of the recipes so that if you want to get anything out, um, we're going to start with a cocktail because we, yes, exactly. And then dinner's ready and you can serve it to your people, which is the best part. Um, so we're going to start with a cocktail because we all need a cocktail. It's almost the weekend and we're still celebrating Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> um, and then we're going to do a quick marinade for our fish. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys about selecting good fish, um, what to look for, what to ask, so that you can really source good fish um, when you're cooking at home. So we'll get that marinated, and then we're going to make our jalapeno cilantro sauce, which is like my favorite, favorite sauce for tacos. So I'm super excited we're making it. And then we will make our salad dressing, and we'll pop our tacos and our fish in the oven at some point. So if you're cooking along, preheat your oven to 425. So that's nice and ready to go. Um, and then we'll put together our salad and our fish will be ready. And I'll just kind of show you guys how I put together those tacos. So it all kind of, it seems like a lot, but it's all super simple. It's great for a weeknight dinner and it's fast and easy. So, the recipe for the margarita that we're gonna make you guys is pretty much a skinny margarita because there's not a lot of sugar involved or like a lot of the mixes that you can buy have like high fructose corn syrup, just really sugary ingredients. And we're just using a tablespoon of agave nectar. And I like, if you can find, this one says light agave nectar, if you can find that, great. The darker one is fine too. So I'm going to add all of my ingredients to my cocktail shaker and I have ice in there ready to go. So I'm going to add my tablespoon of agave. And if you like a tart margarita, you could leave this out and it would really be a skinny margarita. Do you have any? Um, but I do not have, and this is lime juice, you guys. And I love, if you guys don't, we'll keep talking about the oven in a second. This is the HEB fresh squeezed juice that they sell in the back of the store. If you guys have not found that, I absolutely love that HEB juice section. It's amazing. Um, Can you show for, that again? That yes, put so up the bottle? it's just pure fresh oh, squeezed lime juice. And right. they also sell lemon juice, grapefruit juice, and like some green juices. But like for cooking, if you're using a lot of lime or lemon, it's such a great thing to buy. Um, and then this is the jalapeno infused tequila I'm using you guys. It's Tonteo brand. 
You can find it at almost any liquor store in Houston, like Goody Goody um, or anywhere. I feel like I got this at Goody Goody. Um, but it's just already, it's not super spicy at all. But I was going to tell you guys, if you want to substitute, just use a plain like silver tequila, just the light colored plain tequila you could also use and just do like a mint and lime margarita if you're sensitive to spice. But I love spice. So this part is not in your recipe. You can take just like three thin slices or four, because I love jalapeno, off the end of your jalapeno and add it to your cocktail shaker. And it's just a little bit of like fresh juice. And then I'm gonna add, it's a little spicy, but not, not crazy. I'm gonna add some mint and just kind of tear it up so that you get that fresh mint flavor. And then I was gonna show you guys, I have a, an herb garden and I love it when the herbs start to flower because I use these as garnish in cocktails and entrees. Um, and it's just so pretty. So I was also gonna tell you, this is not in your recipe, but if you wanna lighten it up a little bit and not have quite so much alcohol, you can always top it off with Topo Chico, but don't put your Topo Chico in your cocktail shaker because it will explode. <laughs> This is like the arm workout. Okay, and then if you are a salt person, I love salt on my rim, but I don't want it all the way around because I don't want it like sticking to my face. So I just do a little bit and you can just kind of get part of your glass wet with lime juice and just do a little bit of salt. This is a type of salt called Redmond Real Salt and it's a mineral salt. You can find it at HEB and everywhere. Um, but it has really pretty flecks of like pink in it and I think it's so pretty with the cocktail. Okay, I love this cocktail and I'm super excited we're making it. Okay, so this is going on top, this really pretty purple lime. I mean, lime, flower, and then we have our lime. So that's it, you guys. It's pretty easy. You can like make larger quantities. Cheers, Belinda, thank you for having me. That's beautiful. I have to try it just to make sure it's okay. <laughs> it's so good. It's super tart, which I like things really like tart and acidic. If you don't like it quite so tart, you can add more agave, like another tablespoon of agave, or just top off your drink with like a little bit of Topo Chico. But that is so fun and so pretty. Okay, so moving So you have on. a garden out back? You have a- I do. A I use a company called Rooted Garden to plant my garden, and it was the best investment ever. I love it. And they will like walk around your whole property and say like, this is the best place. This is where that you're gonna get the best, you know, kind of sun for your garden, which I knew nothing about, um, but I love them. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Seasonal comfort is who I use to fix my oven. Okay. We're gonna talk about fish and we're going to do a quick marinade for our fish. Fish is so tender and you don't need to marinate it for long. It can just be a marinade at room temperature while you're sort of getting things out for, and this is in your recipe, just for like 20 minutes, that's enough. Um, and I got halibut for this because the halibut at Whole Foods looked really great but you could do red snapper, you could do cod, um, you could do grouper. Really, I think the more important thing is looking for the fish that really looks good and looks fresh and not getting tied so much to the type of fish. Like this would even be good with salmon. 
or like if any of you fish in Texas and you go fishing for like redfish, it would be great with redfish. We've done that before when we've gone to Port Aransas with friends and I'll make like redfish tacos for a huge group. And it's so easy because you just put them on sheet pans, put people to work, like getting all the toppings ready. And then everyone just comes through and makes their own tacos. Okay. And what so, size fillets do you have there? So these are six ounce fillets. They're for a dinner serving trout. I love trout. So we do, we go to Idaho a lot in the summer and we'll do trout tacos there with slaw and I'll put like a blackened seasoning on top. So I honestly think any fresh fish would be delicious with this. Um, so these are each about six ounces. I think these might be more like five. Um, but you're going, once they're cooked, we're going to kind of flake them into the tacos. So they kind of go farther than your typical um, fish serving, because not each person is even probably going to have a whole filet. Okay, so I'm going to use up the rest of this lime and put some fresh lime juice on the halibut. And this just helps to give it really good flavor. So I have my lime on there. I'm gonna put this last little piece in. And then I'm gonna give you guys two options. So I can't always find this seasoned salt in Houston. It's called Redmond Real Salt and it's organic seasoned salt. It has really good clean ingredients, but you can order it from Amazon. Maybe Melissa will find the link and pop it in. This is like, we put it on roasted potatoes. We put it on like mixed roasted veggies. It's my go-to like shortcut when I just want to throw something together. And there are other seasoned salts out there. It is an H-E-B, but I don't know if it like sells out. Sometimes I can't find it. And I think like sometimes that happens, things get popular and they just go. So this has great flavor. It's a great shortcut. And then this is my homemade taco seasoning. And I gave you guys a link to this. And it's just chili powder and garlic and onion powder, cumin and paprika. And you can add the cayenne or leave it out. So since I have some of this made and I just make it in these little mason jars and put it in my pantry. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on top of the halibut. Um, and this is also delicious just as a roasted fish on its own. If you wanted to make a nice flavorful fish to serve with salad in the summer, this would be a great way to marinate it. Okay. So now we're just gonna leave this out at room temperature for 20 minutes. Meat can really sit out longer than people realize. And you want meat and fish to be, like you want the proteins to relax before you cook them. Because if it's cold, then it's not really soaking up those flavors. So it's a good idea to let it just sit at room temperature. So fish, it's like 30 minutes is the rule if you're cooking it. Um, if you're eating like ceviche, you really should make it and eat it and keep it cold. Um, for steak, you can have your steak out on the counter for like two hours and it is absolutely fine. So, and I'm gonna use this little sheet pan to cook the fish later. So I'm just gonna keep it close by. Okay, so next we're making this amazing sauce. And I hope you guys will make this. If you don't make it tonight, please, please make it like another time, like make it on a weekend. It's good with chips. It's amazing on like chicken tacos, amazing on fish tacos or like a taco salad. Um, it's amazing. So I'm grabbing my food processor. And if you don't have a food processor, you could also make this in like a Vitamix or a blender. Just a regular blender would be fine. I'm fighting with my food processor. Okay, I'm gonna make sure this is all on and connected and plug it in, that's important. And then 
you don't have to do a ton of chopping for this because the food processor is going to do the work for you. So I'm going to put in my lime juice. It's five tablespoons of lime juice. We have a teaspoon of salt and I'm using kosher salt for this. I use, I just posted in Instagram, a little like tutorial about different types of salt that you guys can watch. I use this diamond crystal kosher salt all the time. It's such a great all purpose cooking salt. So I'm putting that in and then we're adding four garlic cloves and you don't need to chop these. You just need to take off the skin. So we're gonna cut off our skin, just kind of cut off both ends of the garlic clove, which helps release the skin. And then just give it a nice kind of whack with the side of your knife and throw it in. And if you got, I get this question a lot. If you see this kind of piece in the middle, I can't really get to it. There's like a little green piece in the middle. Right. Totally fine. It makes, it's a little bit stronger in flavor, but it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to change the flavor of the dish enough that you need to like mess with worrying about it. Okay. So let's get the rest of these in here. That's just my philosophy. Are there jalapenos in any other dishes here or just this one? Um, just one. So I, bought go ahead and I bought the ones that were already cut up just because I That's was lazy. Um, but that I wasn't quite sure how much it was. That's probably like, I would guess like three, but it'll be enough. It'll totally work. Also, can I, Marcia, can I ask how many of us are actually cooking along? Yes, I do cooking. ask that. So thank you, Belinda. Cause I see some, uh, Catherine is, Michelle is, BJ, it looks like you're watching. <laughs> I'm Laura, thinking, but like I, act, I actually, I did a little bit of prep earlier so I could listen. Oh, I love it. And even if you're not cooking tonight, hopefully this will just inspire you guys to make these and see how like easy they are and cook them later. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to cut the jalapeno in a really easy way. Stand, That's a big jalapeno. This is such a good tip. Stand it up on your board. And it helps if you have the like stem to hold on to and just cut down the side. And then all of the seeds or most of the seeds stay in the middle and you can just kind of toss this part or compost it and you're left with just the skin or the flesh. And this is how I cut bell peppers also. And if you have some seeds, you can just kind of like tap them on your board to get them out or they can go in your sauce also. Okay. Oops, that side did not get cut. So I'm gonna cut it again. There we go. I'm getting all of my knives sharpened tomorrow and it's been a long time coming and I cannot wait. Okay. And so we that's have such a better way to do it. Say again. That is such a better way to do it. It really is because I can't tell you how many times I've been in class and had people like cut right through the middle of a bell pepper. And I'm like, no, just because it's like, it's so much easier to do this. And then, you know, yes, you might have a few seeds on your board, but for the most part, you don't have to mess with them. And I'm just going to give these kind of a rough chop to get them going you could really just throw them in too. So those are going in. We have our salt, our lime, and our garlic in there already. And I'm gonna puree this before I add the oil. And when we add the oil, I'm gonna take this out of the top, this piece, and just slowly stream it in. But first I'm gonna mix up this. Notice how clever she is. She mutes us. Say again. I said, how clever you are to mute your uh, your grinding noise. Um, Zoom does that automatically. Isn't that funny? We oh, really? Um, 
I know I used to always apologize for it. And then my assistant Melissa was like, Zoom mutes the loud noise. Okay, guys, it's mostly all pureed. There's like a little bit of like chunky jalapeno in there, a tiny bit, but for the most part it's pureed. So I'm gonna slowly drizzle in my oil and this is avocado oil, which is a really healthy oil. It doesn't have any flavor. It's kind of like using canola oil or vegetable oil, but it's a healthier fat for you. Um, you can buy large bottles of avocado oil at like Costco um, or Trader Joe's and there it's like a great value. So I'm just going to stream this in really slowly so that it sort of emulsifies and it'll end up looking creamy even though there's no dairy in here. Okay, sorry, that's such a slow process, but you do want to drizzle that slow because you want it to emulsify or come together. And then the last thing you do is add your cilantro. And I love telling people, you do not need to pull all the leaves off of your cilantro and parsley. The stems of cilantro and parsley are just as flavorful as the leaves. So especially when they're getting pureed in a sauce. Just give it a rough chop and then add all of this to your food processor. I have to say I just planted cilantro in my garden and it grow it's it grows like a weed. It did. I have had a hard time with cilantro. Um I think when I planted it it was already too hot a couple years ago and it just got so like wilted right away. Um, but I love cilantro. I wonder if anyone out there, there are some people that have an enzyme that makes cilantro taste soapy. So if that's you, if any of you hate cilantro, you can just substitute um, like parsley just to have an herby kind of fresh sauce. Okay, I'm gonna just pulse this on and on off a few times. Okay, that looks amazing. I wish I had a little glass pole to put this in to show you guys. Here, I can actually, that had tequila in it. I'm just gonna tip this so you can see it. And then I'll put some in a bowl in a little bit, but it will keep in your refrigerator for like a week. And it's just like, it's such a great thing to use as a, like taco salad dressing instead of a vinaigrette. If you make like a nice chopped salad with some taco meat and avocado, it's like really great to drizzle on that also. Okay, I'm moving my food processor. Okay, so let me think about this. The fish cooks really quickly. So we can, I think we should go ahead and put it in because it can kind of sit a little bit at room temperature while we toss up our salad if we're finishing. So let's do our halibut. If you want for easier cleanup, you can put a piece of parchment paper on your sheet pan. I don't use foil anymore to cook on because the aluminum can leach into your food when it gets hot. If the aluminum gets hot and there's food on top um, and you just don't want those like metals, you don't wanna eat those. It's not great for your brain. Um, but I'm gonna spray this with a little cooking oil. 
And I like using just a plain avocado oil spray. There's nothing else in it but avocado oil. And then I'm gonna take my little fillets and you can just leave the skin on and set the skin right on. Ooh, this smells really good. It smells like lime. And I wanna to talk to you guys too, I haven't done this yet, about sort of what to ask the fishmonger or the butcher when you're looking for good fish. So this just goes in like this. You want a little bit of room you can even kind of spread them out like that because you want air to get around the fillets. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper because I didn't do that yet. Just to add some flavor. I used to think before I went to cooking school, I used to think that you didn't have to add salt to fish because it came from salty water. Is that like the silliest thing? <laughs> I don't know why I had that in my brain, but you need to salt like pretty much everything. <laughs> okay, and I went ahead and hit the convection button on my oven just to help it go a little bit quicker. It'll just help move that warm air around the oven. And I do that when I'm cooking like chicken. I don't really use it for um, red meat. I don't cook a ton of red meat in my oven unless it's like a beef tender. Um, I tend to cook steaks on top of my stove in like a cast iron pan or on the grill, but I sometimes like using convection because it just makes things go fast. Okay. We are making a variation of a recipe on my website called super simple salad dressing, but it has some spices in it and um, I use lime juice in this version instead of like an apple cider vinegar or a champagne vinegar. So it's a really delicious vinaigrette to have like alongside um, fajitas or if you're doing like enchiladas and you want just a really simple salad on the side, this is a great thing to make. So the first thing I do is- So we're moving to the cumin lime dressing now? Is that yeah. what you're saying? This is the cumin lime dressing okay. um, for our salad. So I'm gonna put my lime juice in the jar and I'm just using any type of glass jar. It could be a mason jar. It could be like a leftover salsa jar that you clean and put aside. And then I have one garlic clove and I'm just gonna take the skin off of my garlic clove. And then we're gonna use a microplaner to grate our garlic so that it gets really nice and fine. And this is a microplaner. If you guys don't have one of these, this is awesome. I use this for um, like grating Parmesan, for grating garlic sometimes, shaving like chocolate on top of desserts for um, a garnish. I use it for so many different things. And it kind of sticks to the back so don't worry about trying to do it over your jar. If any falls on the cutting board, we can grab it with our knife, but it really just sticks to the microplaner and then you can tap it in. So be careful of your fingers because you get down to the end of your garlic clove. And then I just kind of toss this last piece. So I have a tiny bit left, it's going to the side. And then you have that like garlic kind of puree almost that is going right in here. You can also just mince it really fine. Okay, and so where so do you get this microplaner? I mean, you can get it anywhere. You can find it at Target, Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon, um, almost anywhere. I got another one at Williams-Sonoma. Yes, Williams-Sonoma, um, Sir Latab. It really is one of my favorite kitchen tools. So now I'm just shaking up the garlic and the lime juice because I want that garlic to really get like almost cooked with the acidity of the lime juice. And this is something I do with every salad dressing. Like even if I'm starting it with shallots, I'll soak my shallots in vinegar before adding 
everything else. Um, but this is just kind of a great tip for making your salad dressing a little bit better. So instead of tasting like you have raw garlic in your dressing, it like tones down that flavor of the garlic. So you just wanna let this sit for a little bit. And while that is sitting, I was gonna show you guys, I have my cumin and oregano to add. And I did not have Mexican oregano in my pantry. So this is just regular oregano. And this is a really good extra virgin olive oil. You want to look for a cold pressed olive oil, which means it hasn't been heated. Um, and this is an unfiltered olive oil, which is why it's that really pretty color. Um, and this is made by a local woman in Houston um, who gets the olives. I'm gonna steal a sip of my Topo Chico. Her family grows those olives on her grandmother's land in Lebanon. And I think the olive trees are like hundreds of years old. Melissa, I think, gave a but I love her oil. She does not pay me to advertise for her. I'm always like, I just am such a fan. It's really delicious. So try where you, it. Where do you get that? You can order it from her website. And then she goes to, I know she goes to the Heights Farmer's Market. Um, which I think is only once a month, but she will literally like deliver it to your door. Um, and she gives $5 okay. of every bottle to the MS Society. She's like amazing. Okay. Um, I'm gonna build our salad with you guys and we're not gonna toss it until we're ready, but we can kind of get it going. So, you guys have a recipe for this, but it's one of those things that's like, kind of play with it and add what you really want to add. So I gave you a bunch of ideas. You could add some dried cranberries or dried currants. You can add, um, these are pepitas, pumpkin seeds, and I have some goat cheese. You could add tomatoes, like I have some really pretty cherry tomatoes, you could have some cherry tomatoes and add, or some like drained and dried out garbanzo beans would be delicious in this. But I'm just gonna do some pumpkin seeds, cranberry, dried cranberry, and goat cheese. I just decided I wanted it, and this is like an herbed goat cheese. That's really yummy. I got this, I think at H-E-B. So I'm gonna crumble the goat cheese. And then this will be kind of a simple salad to go with our tacos. I'm gonna rinse my hands. And then we can finish our dressing and we'll wait to sort of toss that until the very end. So I'm gonna add half of a teaspoon of cumin and half of a teaspoon of oregano. And you could also leave the spices out if you want and just do like a really simple um, citrus vinaigrette. But I love adding these spices. Uh, yum. Okay, and then it's one fourth cup of the olive oil. And I'll tell you guys, I usually just eyeball it if you have this much lime juice, you can just double that, do two more of olive oil. And that's a ratio I like, which makes a pretty acidic dressing. Um, so you can taste it. We'll shake it up and do a little more. We're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper also, some kosher salt and pepper. And then the best way to taste your salad dressing is to dip a leaf of lettuce in the dressing. Because if you just tried to taste it on your own without lettuce, it's just gonna taste really strong. So this looks so good. You can also add a little honey to this if you want, it would be delicious. I just try to do my dressings without sugar. Okay, so I'm gonna dip this in. And we'll see if we think it needs more olive oil, more salt. It 
it's super tart. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. Yum. And a little bit more salt. And then I think we'll be good to go. I'm gonna try it one more time. And I do think it's important to like taste everything you're making before you serve it. Because then you start to realize like how you like things, how you can adjust the flavor. Sorry guys, I always need sips of something while I'm teaching because otherwise my I like lose my voice. Okay, I'm gonna taste this one more time. Let me know those of you who are making the salad dressing, what you think, because it is really tart. So you can add like, I would add two teaspoons of honey if you wanna soften it up. Personally, I like the tart myself. I do too. And like we get so much sugar in our diets from things we're not even thinking of each day that like it's really good to tone down the sugar when we can. But this is one of my favorite dressings. It's so yummy. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside until we're ready to toss up our salad. And then I just wanted to talk to you guys about if you did too much oil, you can always add some more lime juice. So if you have any more limes, or even if you have some like champagne vinegar or lemon juice, you could add a little bit more acidity to balance it out. But that's why it's good to taste as you go. Okay, I'm gonna grab. our cabbage. So when I make fish tacos, I like to keep it pretty simple. I add, I warm up the tortilla. I'm asking, somebody has their label iPhone and I'm like. Who is it? <laughs> yeah, who are you? Come, come clean, we wanna meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was going to show you guys, I love these. Yay, I'm glad you like the dressing. Um, I love this brand of tortillas. They're grain free. I'm probably going to use the almond flour tonight. So it's like a high protein tortilla and they have really great clean ingredients, but they're definitely better warmed up. Like you got to warm them up and kind of get them crispy. And you can do that one of two ways. If you have a gas flame, you can put it as low as it goes on your gas burner and just put this right on top of the grate. That's what my kids do all the time. Um, or you can warm them in like a warm pan, but that's what we end up doing in our family. And it's like, everyone's throwing tortillas on. Right, then they get that nice charred kind of marks in places and it's just an easy way to do it. So I love having red for these because it adds really good color. But if you are, actually this one, this one doesn't have a big root. You'll see in this green cabbage, there's this thick, kind of stem that you wanna cut out before you slice it to use in your tacos. Cause it's just really like thick and it doesn't taste good. So just use your knife in like kind of a V pattern and cut that out. And then you can put your cabbage down flat and just take your knife and start at the top, tuck your finger and keep them behind your knife and just slice this very thin. And if you have any extra, you could always just throw it directly in your salad and it would be delicious in your salad too. So I always take off this kind of top piece of cabbage because it's usually kind of wilted. I also have, if you guys like cabbage, I grew up having this red cabbage salad that I love and I have the recipe for it on website. Um, great thing to make with like burgers in the summer. Okay. I'm going to flip my tortilla so I don't burn it. 
And it's really like, it's not even that charred. Okay, so we have our cabbage. We have some avocado that I'll just open up. And we have our green sauce, the jalapeno cilantro sauce. And then you can either just peel the skin off or you can grab a spoon to scoop out your avocado. So let's look at our um, fish and see how it looks. It looks amazing. Okay, I'll tell you guys how, and my tortilla is almost ready. So it's starting to pull apart a little bit, which means that it's done. Um, and it just should be firmer, not like firm to the touch, but it shouldn't be super soft, which would mean it wasn't cooked through. So I wanna put a little hot pad here. And I'm going to make a taco to show you guys. This, like, I love the halibut just on its own um, with a salad on the side. Okay, so my tortilla isn't super charred, but it has some, like, little bubbles that have come up, and um, it's, like, nice and warm. I'm going to grab, where's my, here's this. Here's our sauce that we made. And I can just use a little teaspoon measure. So I'm gonna scoop out some fish and put it directly on the tortilla. And then I'll lift this up and show you guys. Hopefully you can see. So about half of one of these fillets, this looks amazing. I'm so excited. So about half of a fillet per taco. And then I love the red cabbage because I love the color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red cabbage. You could also add cilantro. You could add some pickled jalapeno. I'm gonna peel the skin off of my avocado so I can have some avocado slices. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of our sauce, which is so flavorful. I hope you guys will make this. It's so good with fish. And that's it. I mean, the fish literally cooks in like all of my sauces dripping off. The fish cooks so quickly. It's so beautiful. this is such a great weeknight dinner. It smells so good. I can't wait to eat it. And all you need is your margarita and your taco. <laughs> Do you have yeah. questions? I'm gonna taste a little piece of my halibut and see how it is. It looks it looks delicious. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Like it's just you just get a hint of the lime with the fish, and then you have that nice spice coating on top. And it really would make just a nice fish entree on its own. And cooking fish like this in high heat in the oven is such a great way to cook fish at home. Okay, guys, that is everything. I would love, if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer. Oh, okay, I have a post. Melissa, we grabbed the link. So, I have a post on fish or on, on beef tacos. And I think the key is to add some tomato sauce or some chicken stock to get more liquid. And I use my own taco seasoning. So where did it go? It was on a pan somewhere. Um, so I have a whole step-by-step -step blog post on that. And I use like some chopped onion and I add the meat and the spices. And then I add some chicken stock to really bring it all together. And it makes such good beef tacos. You could also use turkey, ground turkey, but use a ground dark meat turkey because I just think that the breast meat is a little too um, dry sometimes for tacos. So try that. And you guys, if you make the, um, here it is. If you make the taco seasoning, 
make a double batch or a triple batch. I knew someone who made a bunch of these and gave them as holiday gifts one year with a taco recipe. And it's just like a nice thing to have in your pantry. It lasts a long time. It lasts forever. Well, not forever. I do tell people like you should go through your spice cabinet and open up your spices and smell them and see if it smells like, like that smells like oregano. Every once in a while, you're gonna open something and it's gonna smell like dust. Like it's gonna have no flavor left and that's when you toss it. So that is a better test of your spices than an expiration date. Um, and I usually do that every like end of summer before we start a school year. I kind of reorganize everything and go through and look at everything. Like I did throw away something this week that was, um, it, I think it was Aleppo pepper and I just had it in my pantry for a long time. So, and I was about to use it and I opened it and smelled it. And I was like, this smells like nothing. And I threw it away. Yay. Did I miss a question that just popped up or was it just a comment? She a wanted to know about chicken. the recipe for chicken. For chicken tacos? Or just regular? She, she didn't specify, but I was thinking the chicken tinga. Oh, yes. So if you guys have a, do you have an Instant Pot by chance? I just bought one of those personally. Okay. So I have this recipe for chicken tinga tacos and they're delicious. It's like lime juice and chipotle peppers and the chicken just gets shredded and you make it in the Instant Pot. So it's super easy. Um, or I also have a recipe for just like easy chicken fajitas that we can share. What, what does the word tinga mean? I've never heard that word. It's a type of recipe that's like chipotle and lime. Oh, so uh -huh. it's just that kind of mixture. You could just say, I should have just said probably chipotle lime chicken tacos because <laughs> we'll probably see tinga and they're like, what is that? It, it, it makes it daunting to me, like, oh no, it's exotic. <laughs> right, like it's something complicated. Oh, thank you. The pork carnitas are like, I love teaching that to people because there's like three ingredients. It's pork shoulder, onion, and a bay leaf and salt. And it just cooks in the slow cooker all day long. And it is so good. Thank you guys so much. Well, I hope you guys enjoy your tacos and your margaritas and your sauce and your salad. I am gonna toss up my salad really quickly if you guys wanna keep chatting with me while I do this. Um, I have to make space. This always and happens. So the, the idea of just tossing it at the end is so that it doesn't get soggy. Yes, exactly. So that it doesn't get wilted. The only salads that you can really toss ahead of time are kale salads. So now that everything else is done, I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of dressing and you want to make sure you don't over dress your salad. Like start with a little at a time because you can always add more. Or like if you're serving other people, you could do a light toss. And then you could put out more dressing on the side for people that like more. Um, and then after I toss my salad, I like to finish it with just a little bit of flaky salt to kind of have the finishing touch. Oh, chicken taquitos. Yes, those are so good. So, so good. My kids, when I make those, they like disappear very quickly. Okay, so that is it, you guys. I'm gonna make a plate of some halibut, some salad, and thank you, Belinda, so much for having us. Thank you, bravo. I appreciate all you attending, and um, I, I'm gonna try, if I figure it out, to send um, the video, maybe if you guys want to refer to it. I don't know. Perfect, and if you guys need any other recipes, let us know, we're always happy to share. Um, I love sharing recipes. So anytime you can DM me 
or email or ask Belinda and we'll get you what you need. She's and uh, go follow her Instagram page. Yes, I would love to have you guys at Smart in the Kitchen. Yeah, and follow my Instagram page too. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Thank you, thank, Marcia. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks for hosting this. Got dinner ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.